Okay, so we are going to talk about graft versus host disease, particularly acute forms of graft versus host disease. So uh, acute graft versus host disease often can present as a very subtle clinical um, papular eruption. It almost looks like a morbilliform drug eruption, and oftentimes the rule out is uh, rule out acute GVHD versus morbilliform drug. And so um, that's a very difficult differential diagnosis, both clinically and histologically. But um, if the patient has a, a bone marrow transplant, then, you know, they're definitely at risk for GVHD. Um, and I'll just go through a little bit of how this can present histologically. So we have a uh, biopsy specimen here that the patient has very atrophic skin, but as you go in on higher power, you will notice that um, there's very minimal basal vacuolar change, especially as you come to this portion of the section, you can see these vacuoles forming in the basal layer. Um, and this is pretty um, subtle. And so just to give you this idea of how subtle GVHD can truly be, um, I wanted to show you this, this example here. Now, if you go over to this part of the section, it's important to examine all of the epithelium that you have to rule out GVHD. You'll find some areas of more vacuolation um, along the basal layer. Um, and as you go a little bit further along, you'll kind of notice that some of these cells are a little bit plump in the uh, mid part to the superficial part of the epidermis. So oftentimes you'll get this kind of dismaturation effect. Um, you'll get some pink eosinophilic change within the um, cytoplasm of some of the cells. Again, very subtle, and this is a very subtle um, uh, dyskeratosis. And so, you know, this, this could easily, easily, easily be, um, passed over uh, if you weren't suspecting a, a GVHD here. And this was called grade one. So oftentimes grade one won't even be really signed out. Um, grade two, for example, uh, will actually start to show a lot more easy to notice basal layer vacuolar change. You'll also start to um, see more prominent eosinophilic change within the epidermis as well. And you can see here, uh, as you scroll along the epidermis, that there's just this dismaturation here. Um, you have areas that look pretty eosinophilic from top to bottom. Um, again, prominent basal vacuolar change. You can definitely see spongiosis as well. Um, but again, just notice how it's pretty posse inflammatory. There's um, really only that basal vacuolar change in the dyskeratosis is going to signal you in on the GVHD if you weren't given a clinical history. Now, if the clinical uh, history is concerning for GVHD, then you're definitely going to hone in on this change. And compare this part of the specimen to this part of the specimen, which you, you don't really see as much basal vacuolar change here. You do see some dyskeratotic um, or eosinophilic change to the background of the keratinocytes. And over here, you do see a dyskeratotic keratinocyte. So, um, and here as well. So uh, that's all consistent. Um, and this other part of the section, you can see more of that GVHD-like change with the uh, basal vacuolar change, dyskeratosis. You can have a mild perivascular lymphohistocytic infiltrate. Um, you may or may not see eosinophils. Eosinophils can be present as well. And so this type of um, change is, is a lot more prominent than you would expect to see in a morbilliform drug eruption. Usually you're not going to see this amount of spongiosis, amount of basal vacuolar change, amount of dyskeratosis in a morbilliform drug eruption. And grade three um, can look pretty similar to grade two. It's a little bit subjective, but you're getting even more dyskeratosis. You're getting separation of the epidermis, starting to get some separation of the epidermis with the uh, underlying dermis. That's how prominent that basal vacuolar change is starting to become in this particular case of acute GVHD. So um, these, this finding is not as subtle, but you'll notice that again, that the dermis doesn't contain a ton of inflammatory cells, just some sparse perivascular and interstitial lymphocytic inflammation here. Um, 
So it's all really telling when you look in the epidermis and you find so many areas of dyskeratotic, apoptotic keratinocytes, contiguous um, basal vacuolar change. That's very nice for uh, acute GVHD. Now in a in a erythema multiform, you'd expect to see a lot more dyskeratosis even localized in certain areas and almost full thickness. Um, so erythema multiform, in my opinion, shows even more significant changes than what we're seeing here in this GVHD uh, specimen. And with um, fixed drug, you can see another pattern that looks pretty similar to this with the interface change. But typically, you're going to find a lot more eosinophils in a perfect fixed drug. Um, example, and you're also going to find um, a little bit more dense lymphocytic inflammation, depending on what stage you biopsy it. So if you biopsy it at a, at a phase that's going out, you may not find as much prominent um, upper dermal lymphocytic inflammation and or eosinophils in a fixed drug. So a uh, fixed drug can be easily confused with GVHD, um, especially with these uh, uh, melanophages. It would be pretty tricky to tell the difference. And so you really have to put it together with the clinical. Um, if you were absolutely forced to choose GVHD versus fixed drug, I would, I would choose GVHD here with the lack of eosinophils and the relatively posse cellular um, upper dermal inflammation and the haphazard scattered keratinocytes. Um, scattered dyskeratotic keratinocytes would make me favor um, acute GVHD, but a fixed drug and GVHD histologically can look very similar and it depends on what stage you biopsy it. So uh, hopefully you'll have some clinical information to help you out there. Okay. And then um, there are chronic forms of GVHD. You can have lichenoid changes, of the epidermis where you get, um, you don't really have a lot of times, this is a, actually an example of sclerodermoid GVHD, but um, sometimes chronic lichenoid GVHD can show similar features of that hyper orthokeratosis and hypergranulosis um, above. So the epidermal change may look similar to lichenoid. Um, and then when you go in on higher power in the dermis, you'll notice some sclerodermoid changes where there's thickening of the collagen bundles here. Um, so chronic GVHD you usually don't see anything in the way of a significant interface change. Um, it's mostly a, uh, it's already kind of stabled out and you're just getting mostly acanthosis with hypergranulosis, hyperorthokeratosis, and maybe some uh, sclerodermoid changes in the dermis too. So keep in mind, chronic GVHD can present many different ways. Um, so you really have to have a high degree of suspicion this particular specimen was um, felt to be more representative of a chronic GVHD with features resembling sclerodermoid GVHD. So uh, we kind of showed you the spectrum here of different GVHD uh, patterns that you can find in an acute phase as well as in a chronic phase.